Welcome to the Living Hope Online Congregation and may you be blessed on Sunday the 27th of December. We trust that you've had a really special Christmas and that you've encountered the presence of Jesus every single moment. Now we have had to record this special Sunday the 27th a little bit earlier than usual. We haven't actually experienced Christmas Day yet, although we are fully into the Christmas season, but we trust that you're encouraged and ministered to today by this service. Let me read to you from Luke's Gospel what the angel said to the shepherds. Luke 2, 9 to 11. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. I think the King James says, they were terrified. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I'm really encouraged by that passage. I love it for one of the special passages around Christmas time because it's the message of the angel of the Lord to these forgotten shepherds. And to these shepherds who maybe society looked down upon, they're on the hillside. Here the angel said, this good news of great joy is for all the people. Uh, they were probably shepherds looking after the Passover lambs. So already you're thinking about this lamb, the Jesus born, the lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. And of course, it's good news that the angel brings. Good news, we need a savior. And certainly in 2020, 21, we need a savior. Boris can't help us. Uh, no world leader can help us. Even a vaccine won't sort out this issue. We need a savior. And God is mighty to save. We need Jesus, who is Emmanuel. He is our God, who is with us, and he is in us. And it's great to have friends join us this Christmas time from all over the world. And at this Christmas time, why don't you just share a Christmas greeting wherever you are. If you're on the Facebook Live, you can comment there, share a Christmas greeting uh, with us and let us know from where in the world you are and what's been happening this Christmas time. And today's message is that there's something about Mary. Have you got that? There's something about Mary. And Mary is one of my favorite characters from the Christmas story. But tell me, who is your favorite character? Maybe you'd want to comment there in the comment section. Who's your favorite character and why from the Christmas story? Well, today it's a special day because in the studio I'm joined by my wife, Annette. Annette, why don't you say hello to our online congregation? Hello, everyone. And uh, why don't you say hello, comment back and let her feel the love. We're going to have Annette pray in a few moments time. Uh, we've recorded a beautiful new carol, Noel, uh, that Holly sings most of it there for us. So as we come to worship, Annette is going to pray for us. I'll get a drink of water. Annette, why don't you pray for us as we come to worship? Father, I just thank you that you're with us, Lord. I thank you that you have many names, and one of those is Emmanuel, that you are with us. And I thank you that your very presence is with us 24-7, not just at Christmas, but through the whole year. And I just pray now that everyone who's watching and listening today, Lord, will just be aware of your very presence in their home today. That you'd come and you'd speak to them, Lord. Okay. We just ask you now that you'd open our hearts, Lord. Help us to listen. Open our, our ears and to hear what you wanted to tell us, Lord. Yeah. And help us to be ready to obey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the, the privilege we have of coming into your very presence. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 And you know, this isn't Chris, uh, Christian karaoke. This is Christian worship. So why don't we, if you can, where you are, uh, get to your feet, lift your voice, raise your hands, and we'll sing this wonderful uh, new take on the carol, Noel. Bonbenten 
the savior of humanity unto us a child is born he shall reign forevermore no Yes, Jesus, we worship you, we adore you, and we bless you. We trust you being blessed as we've worshipped you today. Amen. Amen. That's a lovely carol. And you can, of course, share that from our Facebook or YouTube accounts. Why don't you share that over this Christmas time, right through to the new year? People will love to hear that wonderful carol, Noel. Well, it's Christmas time, a very different Christmas all across the world and for many people maybe even for where you are this christmas time it hasn't been a good experience uh, i've shared with our church family that uh, as a child when we had our christmas meal as soon as we could have our christmas meal we were out away from the dining room table and my annette would even tell you that even for many years i formed that same habit i just wanted to get off the, away from the table as quick as i could and uh, lie down and sleep and it was only after my mother died about 22 years ago that my brother and I chatted about that. And really behind it, we had never talked about it. Why was Christmas day so tense and bad in our home? And the reality was, even though my mom was a lovely Christian woman, her mother had died when she was two years old. 
And Christmas was never a good time for her. And she was passed around for different family members to look after her. And so her mood, you know, was terrible at Christmas time. So my brother and I, we would just try to get away from the table as quickly as we could and get her own space and uh, maybe get the TV on or something and enjoy some peace. And of course, for many families right across the world, it's a very different Christmas. And certainly in these uh, British Isles with this new strain of COVID, families can meet the most for one day. Maybe a lot of families didn't choose to do that in Christmas Day. So it's a yeah, very challenging time. And, and I'm just going to ask Annette what maybe thoughts that she has for the online congregation before we pray for them. This Any word of encouragement, anything you want to share with our online friends? Yeah. Yes, it is a crazy year. I think every year is, is it can be difficult for a lot of people at Christmas time. But of course, this Christmas is very different for a lot of people. And um, I was just reminded when I was reading my devotional this morning that, um, yeah, just reminded of another name that uh, God has given us, which is Prince of Peace. And even in Isaiah, um, we are told in that prophecy that his name will be called Prince of Peace. And Jonathan's already mentioned about the shepherds when the shepherds um, were visited by the angels. Um, I'll just read you Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And I just thought I just thought I would read a little bit from my devotion. This is a little devotional book that Jonathan bought me last Christmas. <laughs> you can have we can advertise it. It's from a friend, yes. Catherine Campbell, friend that we grew up in church with. Great Journey with me. Journey yes. with me, 365 <laughs> daily devotions. She's a great Christian author. You can see her on Facebook. She has her own uh, author page as well. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so just, I'm just reading a tiny little bit out of it, but um, um, yeah, I'll just read it. So, one of the reasons why the Jews find it difficult to accept Jesus as Messiah, uh, they interpreted um, Isaiah's prophecy that as a prince of peace, the Messiah would rid them of their enemy and bring a military peace to the nation. But while the peace of Jerusalem had a, had a special place in, in God's heart, God's interest was in getting rid of the enemy of sin within our hearts, individual hearts. So he, he wants to bring peace to our hearts. God's interested in that. And um, yeah, and just, uh, just another little bit that I read this morning too was, after all, only the one who sees the end from the beginning can speak peace to our hearts in this mixed up world. So I'm gonna just pray for us now. Yeah, so Father, I just thank you that you know us. I thank you that you're with us. And I thank you, Father, that um, at this time of the year, when things are difficult, Lord, and when things are very different, um, when we're feeling lonely, Lord, where we're feeling um, that we're missing family, lots of different emotions that we are going through, Lord, I just thank you that you've reminded us that you are our Prince of Peace. And even, Lord, at this time, we get distracted by the real reason behind this season, Lord. And I just pray that you would just help us to remember it's all about you. I just thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Prince of Peace, that you can only do for my heart what no one else can do. You can bring calm where confusion once reigned and tranquility in exchange for tears. So I thank you, Lord. So I pray now you just fill us with your peace at this time, Lord God, and that you know the end from the beginning. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Annette. Thanks, Matt. And of course, that Hebrew word for peace is that word we all know a little bit of Hebrew, don't we? And that is the word shalom. And shalom means not only peace with God and peace even with the land or environment, but and, and, and peace within and that wholeness that the Lord will give you peace. And I want to just take a moment to pray uh, that the Lord would give you peace in other ways. I've managed to get into the studio this week, as some of you, most of you, many of you know, I've been battling with uh, a bulging disc, C6 it is. I've had an MRI scan and all that, but I tell you what, it's robbed me of peace this last month. A lot of pain, but you know what? Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And it may be that you're in pain or need healing today. And that's what the Shalom of God encompasses. And we're believing God that you will prosper in all things and be in good health just as your soul prospers. That it won't go on forever. That I had to take off last week, but it won't go on forever. I'm back this week. 
And we're on the road to improvement. And the same will be true for you. That he who began a good work in you will carry it through to completion. So if you have an infirmity, if you're not well, if you need the healing of God, the peace of God to come in that way, why don't you just open your hands and I'll pray for us today. Father, I want to thank you for your peace, that, that shalom, which includes healing as well. And we ask now that the healing of Jesus would be a reality in every person that's joining us in worship today. As we open our hands, as little children, we open to receive healing in our bodies, in our minds, that peace would come, that pain would be gone, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, would guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So I speak that healing, that the work of the enemy would have no scope in our lives at all this Christmas, a new year that you would come now and you give strength to the weary that you would increase the power of the weak as your word says that even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall but those whose hope is in the lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not be weary they will walk and not be faint so receive that with open hands today in jesus name in jesus Yes, you know, the first Christmas was filled with signs and wonders and miracles, right? It was a, an amazing time. And we're going to come to worship again. We're going to sing here as in heaven. The atmosphere is changing. That's what happened that first Christmas time, whether it was shepherds uh, or the kings or for Mary and Joseph, whether it was for Anna and Simeon in the temple, the atmosphere is changing the spirit of the Lord is here and I tease my friends who aren't as open to the Holy Spirit as they should be and you know you should be I tease them you know that this work this miraculous work that we see signs and wonders and miracle babies and and dreams and visions and divine interventions and uh, heavenly visitations isn't for the Christmas season alone it's for every single day you know, that's what's that song. I wish it could be Christmas every day. Yeah. Well, actually, that is the message that he's Emmanuel, that he's with us, that his Holy Spirit is with us. So let's declare that the atmosphere is changing here as in heaven. Yes.
the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here. Yes, Lord, we thank it's a new day, it's a new time, it's a new season. It's a season of glory and miracles and, and healings and signs and wonders. And we receive them today, not only today, but every day as we worship you. We want to thank you that, uh, yeah, on that first Christmas, after 400 odd years of quietness, suddenly, bang, heaven was invading earth. Lord, would you invade our lives, invade our earth? empower again in Jesus name amen amen well I've got a little bit of family news to share with you today so we're going to give as many of our staff and volunteers as much time off as we can over Christmas and New Year so next Sunday the third will be a little bit different we do have an online service but it's going to be a little bit different we're going to look at some of the highlights of 2020 and then looking forward into 2021 so it'll be a little bit different but there will be an online service uh, next week on January the 3rd and then for those living on the Isle of Man, we got our first ever New Year's Eve crossover party. It starts about 6 p.m. in the evening with food and maybe geared towards with littler ones in the evening and fun and stuff like that. Then moving towards 10, 10.30, we'll have uh, our worship time. And if I'm well enough, which I trust I am, I'm going to bring a word to get us into 2021. We'll continue. We'll go right through midnight, 1 a.m., worshiping and praising God together that's in project 21 and that is in douglas so from all across the Adaman, why don't you join us for a great family evening together and then if you're just connecting with us via this online don't forget we have our zoom life groups and you can join us on zoom and rather than just being somebody who watches spectator you can get on the pitch with us and be praying and studying and encouraging and uh, info livinghope.im if you'd like to be part of a zoom life group and then we really felt that in the lord that 2021 january was to be a season more of reflection in the, in the lord it's been a, a tough 2020 for all of us and a time to wait on the lord and we're going to start off 21 with 21 promises for 21 so we have a brand new devotional book which has just been written being edited and put together it'll be printed it's going to be longer in content and deeper than the last devotion we did the 41 days and every day we're going to have a testimony as well of uh, somebody in the church that kind of just ties into that devotional thought as well so that's from the 10th to the 31st and if you're part of our online community and you would like free of charge a devotional book i say it's going to be 21 days but it's going to be deeper devotions and a testimony we'll send it to you free of charge just drop a line to us info at livinghope.im and we'll send it to you wherever you are in Europe free of charge. And we'll try to get that to you by the 10th of January when we start the 21 days right through to the 31st of January. So that's our focus for the new year. You remember that old hymn, Standing, Standing, better stop promising, Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Yeah, just stop singing, John. But anyway, that, that old hymn starting by Standing on the Promises of of God. Remember that parable Jesus told about the man who built his house on the rock and the sand? They both heard the same thing, but the difference is what they did and didn't do with what they heard. So obedience to God's word. Let's hear the word of the Lord for those 21 days in a special way. And then as we hear the word of the Lord, apply it to our lives. So looking forward to that 21 promises for 21. And if you want your free copy, costs us money but we'll send it to you free of charge and uh, anywhere in Europe please drop us an email now so we can get our orders sorted out well we want to talk about giving now if you're a guest just tuning in uh, well, just sit back relax on the couch as I am for this the giving part isn't for our guests sit back and enjoy this worship experience if you're from another church please return your tithe to your home church but if you're part of the living hope family if you have got to one of our uh, gatherings today 
on the 27th of December. Well, um, great that you could join us with us online. Now we return our tithes and our offerings. I love this verse from Romans 8, 32. He to who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? You know, God gives us his gift at Christmas time, Jesus, but he is the gift that keeps on giving. And this verse smashes Ebenezer Scroogeism out of us. You know, Ebenezer Scrooge, little, little, tiny, tiny. No, God is a giver and he keeps on giving. And here it says, he'll not just give us Jesus, but he will graciously give us all things. So, let me just challenge us not to have an Ebenezer Scrooge mentality. God has given us talents, he's given us time, and he's given us treasure. Let's give them liberally to others. Let's be a blessing to others. Even if you're in lockdown or restricted, we can always bless, phone, write, encourage others. And just as God gave Jesus, but he gave us all things. Let's be like that. Don't withhold to others. Yeah. And of course, in this season, we're giving online. If it's finance, we're giving. We give online. You've got our bank account details there. You can give a gift from anywhere in the world through PayPal, uh, paypallivinghope.im. You can snap that QR code, etc. And let's give and give generously. And if you have need, please drop us a line. We can always help with your need as well. That's what family are for. Well, as we come to our offering, I want to, our offerings could be a little bit different today for the video because uh, I managed to dig out uh, a nativity story retold by Rob Lacey. Rob was a great man of God who uh, went to be with the Lord at a very young age, shortly after making this video. But I'm sure you're going to be blessed by uh, his paraphrase of the Christmas story here. Top angel Gabriel picks up his work chit for the day. Destination, Nazareth. Contact, Mary Davidson. Message, God's Holy Spirit will get you pregnant with his liberator. Interesting, Mary's a virgin. She's ecstatic. Joe, her fiance, isn't. Till Gabriel brings him round to the idea. Meanwhile, all Jews must trek back to their hometown for registration. So Joe Davidson takes his pregnant fiance on a donkey to Bethlehem, aka Davidstown. They arrive and her waters break. Crisis, no vacancy signs in every B&B window. Joe delivers the baby in a shed full of livestock. Old cloth for blankets, animal feeding trough for a cot. It's a boy! First to hear the local sheep security team via an angel choir. They check it out and it's true. The next few weeks the pubs echo with liberator talk. Later, Eastern astrologers get supernatural cosmic directions and deliver their presence to the miracle baby. Gold, incense oil, and myrrh. The Davidsons move back up to Nazareth. Then, virtually nothing. A brief glimpse of Jesus at 12. And apart from that, all we get is that he's not a typical teenager. He does what he's told. Yes, Lord, we thank you. You graciously give us all things. We thank you for that uh, wonderful uh, performance by Rob there that reminds us of your great love for us and giving us Jesus at Christmas time, but you provide for all of our needs. You are the great and the good shepherd. And we give ourselves to you and take our giving. And may we bless it to many in need at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Of course, as we come to the message, in a few moments' time, you can get the notes from livinghope.im forward slash notes or download the Living Hope app to your smartphone and all our resources are on there as well. Today's message is called There's Something About Mary. There's something 
about Mary. I'm sure we all have our particular favourite characters around the Christmas story that we can identify with. Perhaps it's the shepherds, the shepherds who maybe were looked down upon in society and didn't smell the best living with those sheep all the time. But they heard that message of good news and great joy for all people, includes me. Have you identified with the shepherds? Oh, thank you. That, that you, The message includes me. Maybe it's the kings. Maybe you're a worshipper. They bow down and worship. Maybe Joseph, maybe he is a bit part in this story. Maybe you feel that, oh, I'm just quiet on the side. Uh, everybody focuses on everybody else. Maybe it's Anna and Simeon. Uh, remember after a few days, was it eight days after Jesus is born, parents go to the temple. And they're Anna and Simeon. Takes, Simeon takes baby Jesus in his arms. The nunc dimittis, now that I've held your salvation, I may now depart in peace. Well, today we're going to look at Mary. And uh, we're going to look at Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Let me read that for you. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Look, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's house forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. A pregnant virgin. I know that sounds Irish. A pregnant virgin or an oxymoron like Microsoft works. But at the heart of the Christmas account is that of God choosing a young Middle Eastern woman, perhaps still even a teenager, to give birth to the Messiah. An angel appears to Mary in Luke 1 34 and says, and Mary says to the angel, but how can this be since I'm a virgin? I think most of us are asking that same question today. Like, how can that, how can that happen? She's going to give birth to one who is 100% God and 100% man. And that is in order to reconcile mankind to God. God was in Christ reconciling man to God, not counting their sins against them. There's something about Mary However, what I've noticed in, in many churches is that, sadly, Mary's role is downplayed. As a child, I grew up in a great church, but Mary's role was downplayed. However, the Bible says she was the greatest woman ever to live. In some other Christian traditions, Mary's role is overplayed. It's almost as if she's worshipped. Of course, the Bible says, worship God only. And if you've come from that type of tradition, maybe a story that would help you would be from the first miracle that John records in yeah, John's Gospel in Cana of Galilee, the water and the wine. And of course, the servants go to Mary. Oh, we run out of wine. Of course, Mary, go, Mary isn't the miracle worker. Mary says, look, go to Jesus and do whatever he says. And of course, that's what Mary says. Don't come to me. Go to Jesus and do whatever he says. 
And so in Luke 1, 28 and, and also verse 42, we read, And the angel went to her and said, Greetings you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And then later, in a loud voice, Elizabeth exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you bear. You know, God is going against the flow here. Here's this young woman from the backwater that he is going to use to deliver the Savior of the world. Hey, there's something about Mary. And you know what? Her story should encourage you and me today because Mary is not only the greatest example of womanhood that you could ever find, but also Mary is also a superb example of the type of person that God uses to birth amazing things in his kingdom. Well, what was there about Mary? Well, I'm going to share three things today. First of all, she uh, desired to do God's will. She desired to do God's will. In verse 38, we read, Mary responded, I'm the Lord's servant. That's how she saw herself, as a servant of the Lord. You know, God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. And let me say to you today, God's plan is far more than here are the 10 things I don't do, right? God's plan isn't that we are harmless throughout life. God's plan is that we accomplish great things for him. Why have we been put on planet Earth? We're not only dead to sin, of course there's things we don't do, but we are made alive to Christ. What it is that he has called us to do? In Daniel 11 and 32 we read, But the people who know their God shall be strong and do great things. God has great things for us to do. There was something about Mary, no matter her background, and he has something great for her to do. You know, God's will, Romans tells us, is good, it's pleasing, and it is perfect. But that doesn't mean it's safe. Think about Noah building a, a boat or an ark in the desert and they hadn't even seen any rain. Think about Abraham taking his son up the mountain to sacrifice him. Yet he says, somehow we'll be back, both of us, tomorrow. Moses, millions on a journey from Egypt through the wilderness without a logistics team or a drive through McDonald's, right? Think about Gideon. 300 men to defeat a vast army. All of this is scary. And what was before Mary was something that was scary. It was a life-changing choice she made. And she said, Lord, use me. I love C.S. Lewis, also from Belfast. And, and he in his The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe in the Chronicles of Narnia, I think it's Beaver, that uh, says about Aslan, uh, who said anything about being safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. You know what? God wants to use your life for extraordinary purposes that will not only change something on earth, but will change eternity for many people. And this teenage virgin, without any formal education, and certainly without anything in her a community has a heart to serve the Lord. I'm the Lord's servant. Look at David's response in his generation to the call of God. Psalm 40 and verse 8. I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instruction is, instructions are written on my heart. Do you want to be used by God? Do you want to be blessed by God? Well, hmm. Surrender your life to God. Don't kind of have this attitude, well, how can I be a Christian and get by with doing as little as possible? What are the things that God doesn't want me to do? You know, in everyday situations, God wants to use you and me uh, for opportunities to advance his kingdom. It may be walking slowly through the crowds and, and chatting with people, maybe providing help practically to others, maybe just making a, a connection, providing a meal, showing interest, using your talents, using your treasure, using your time to bless others. Let me ask you, am I a servant of a greater cause than my own or my own family's happiness? <laughs> Am I a servant of a greater cause 
uh, of something greater than my life or my own my family's life or even my own workplace or business god is calling us for something greater you know in jesus day there was a lot of crossing the t's and dotting the i's and ticking the boxes but that isn't exactly what god is after of course he wants obedience but i love what we read in 1 samuel 15:22 what is more pleasing to God? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. Of course, it's our obedience that the Lord is seeking. It's not about all the box ticking and all that. You know, it's, you know I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. But he, he wants to be obedient like Mary was obedient to the call of God. Those who know their God will do great and mighty exploits. And so there's this young girl. She's seemingly little to offer apart from her willingness to serve, her availability, her obedience. And she says, God, whatever I have, I give to you. There's something about Mary. What was there, first of all, about Mary? She desired to do God's will. And then secondly, she decided to pay the cost. We read in verse 38, Mary responded, May everything you have said about me come true. In other words, Mary's singing, okay, okay, you, you say this is a miracle, baby, miracle, okay, um, okay, I've never heard of this before, but okay, bring it on, Lord. What was it going to cost her? It was going to cost her reputation. I mean, think about it in those days, pregnancy outside of marriage for this young girl, and people like to gossip. I mean, when people gossip about our leaders as a church and our church in, in general, our rule of thumb is like, don't defend. Don't waste your time trying to defend yourself. <laughs> you know, just live well and outlive people and, and see, you know, they'll see in the end. In the end, truth will out. But you know what? For Mary, it was going to take at least a generation for truth to out. And even then, some would doubt. Not only was it going to cost her reputation, but also rejection. It was going to be a shame for Mary's family. I, I've been reading, like even in the UK, a, a court case about one of these honor killings. It was a shame for this family, for the daughter to marry this particular guy. And it wasn't much different then. It was worse then. And, and so Mary has this story of an encounter with God when nobody was buying that. And she risked rejection by her family. And then she risked criticism. You know how people love to talk. Things may have quietened down. She has the baby and all sorts of things. But years later, you know, people still like to give it this. There's a cost for her. Think about, you know, years later, you know, you know these gossips and saying, oh, Joseph and Mary's wedding anniversary. What, well, what number is it? And... When was Jesus born? Just do the math there. Yeah. She was going to, always going to come under criticism. And even a few days after Jesus was born and they go to the temple, she's going to hear about a sword will pierce your own heart too. She's going to get a clue about the grief that she's going to go through as, as a mother. There's a cost to be used by God. Rejection and criticism. and Oh, it's terrible. I mean, even today, it may be our time, it may be our finances, it may be our resources being prepared to be inconvenienced. However, I think for most people today, pin your ears back or up, whatever the saying is, I think the greatest cost is what other people think about us. Something inside us in every generation, but particularly today, is that we desperately want everyone to like us. And we desperately want everyone to agree with our decisions. You know, you think about social media. Why do we, why do so many do it? How many likes am I getting? We want everybody to like us. And if we're really going to be used by God. We need to overcome this fear of, well, having the approval of everyone else. We need to start learning how to play to an audience of one. A key moment in Jesus' life, he was praying, playing to an audience of one. At his baptism, for instance, up the mountain. Yeah, my father, this is my son whom I love. In him I'm well pleased. Listen to him. We all want everybody to love us and like us 
and talk well about us and say we're nice people. But you know, the Christian life is totally countercultural. In Proverbs, it says, Proverbs 29, 25, fear of man will prove to be a snare. Uh, I've told some of you before about my primary seven teacher, Mr. Essler. And he used to get the boys in the class by the, I got my hair cut today. Do you know, it's not kind of getting him get my locks. Yeah. So he used to get the by our locks of hair that was just here. And we'd be able to pull you up and down. And you know, that little thing, uh, the fear man is a snare. The snare being the slaves were tied together. They had a hook through their lip even. And, and that little thing would just pull them. And let me say, if you're going to be used by God, we can learn anything from Mary. We need to close our ears to the affirmation of men as if that's going to be what's going to drive us and listen to the affirmation of God. I mean, Jesus went through this as well. In Jesus' own life, he had exactly the same cost to face. In Mark 3, when Jesus was performing all these miracles in the crowds, Around him, when his family heard what was happening, verse 21, they tried to take him away. He's out of his mind, they said. His family wanted to put him in an asylum. They wanted to throw away the key. Jesus said, anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Let me just say to you, there's a cross to bear every day. There is a cost in following Jesus. You know, for some people near you, close to you, family, they are so happy you're following Jesus. But the truth is, for many others, maybe family, maybe close friends, you won't need to Bible bash them. You won't need to Bible bash them or quote verses to them. You may just live a quiet life, but you living a quiet life and you living a godly life and shining that light in your life will start to make them uncomfortable. And you may not be trying to change them, but I tell you, their uncomfortableness, they'll start to try to change you. And they'll start to say things to you. You see, being at the center of God's will is rarely comfortable. I know sometimes people saying guidance, well, is there a peace? Well, let me tell you, very often there's no peace in being in the center of God's will. There's a battle to keep on doing the right thing. When Jesus is in the garden, he's at the center of God's will and he's sweating as a word drops of blood and he's crying out, you know, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. He had to wrestle with God to find peace. And the same is true for Mary. For the first few years of Mary doing, of Mary's life and of Jesus' life and doing the right thing, they would be a family on the run. They would be asylum seekers in Egypt. But Mary, hey, there's something about her. She decided to pay the cost. She decided to pay the cost. Okay, and then lastly, she dared to trust his promises. Verses 34 to 35. Mary asked the angel, how can this happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. When God wants to use us and call us, often it doesn't come with a clearly mapped plans and sensible plans in advance. In order, in honest, in, to be honest, in God's way, often it's so crazy and it's, it's going to require a huge amount of faith. Now, and here's the truth. Faith and trust doesn't mean you don't have struggles. Mary kind of says, you're going to do what, God? Like, I'm your servant. Uh, let it be done according to me to your work, but you're going to do what? Faith is not the absence of questions or uh, doubts or even fear. Faith is the courage to press forward in spite of those things. Months later, when she would meet her cousin Elizabeth, she heard these words. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. You want to live a blessed life, take God at his word. Dare to trust his promises. Hey, this Christmas time, listen again. There was something about Mary. You want to have a blessed life. Here's what Elizabeth said. Well, you want to live a blessed life, take God at his word, dare to trust his promises. Well done, Mary, trusting in his word. You see, we like to play it safe. We like to minimize risks 
God wants to show us, however, what it's like to go beyond ourselves, to be at the end of ourselves. And then we, when we're at the very end of ourselves, we can experience his power in the miraculous. Jesus, you know, met this man who was desperately needing a miracle in his son's life. And listen to the struggle the man had to believe Jesus' word. Mark 9, 23, 24. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for him who believes. And immediately the boy's father said, look, I do believe, but help me come, overcome my unbelief. Questioning and doubting is welcome. Questioning and doubting is not a problem. And like this dad, when we sense the call of God, when we hear the voice of God, you want me to do what? You want me to share the gospel with that person? You want me to write a card to this person? You want me to give that person that amount of money or help that missionary organization? You know, well, there are going to be struggles. But if we we'll ask God to help us, there's no doubt that he will. And that's what that father found. I do believe. I want to do it. Help me. And he does give us grace. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us the assurance about things we cannot see. In our lives, God longs to do great things. He wants to use us to bring about revival. He wants to use us to bring many to come to know Jesus. He wants to use us to help build his church. He wants to give us a personal encounter Jesus. And you know what? There is something about Mary that we can learn from this hectic Christmas time. But as we go into 2021, surrendering our plans for his plans, taking up our crosses daily and taking God at his word. Perhaps God has been speaking to you about serving in the church or serving in another capacity. And maybe you felt unable or too busy to do it. Respond to God in obedience. Or maybe you've been thinking about being used by God, but at the cost, you're still worried about what others will think. Let me tell you, this is the word I think. You need to stand up and be counted. That's God's word for all of us. Or the culture around us, the culture wars around us are hectic, but now is the time to stand up and be counted. You know, oh, if, I, if, I, if I'm pulling in tightly to the church, do you know what, what are the other organizations saying about the church all across the world these days? It's so different. You know, we're going to get so much grief. Well, play the audience of one. Stop worrying about what this organization or this group of people are saying here. Learn from Mary. Maybe it's time you got baptized. You haven't been baptized. It's time to nail your colors to the mast. This is a time, 2020, 21, to stand up and be counted, to count the cost to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus. Maybe it's a financial cost. Maybe you've been blowing your money. Everybody's getting your money. Sky will get your money. Your bank loan will get you. Your mortgage will get your money. Your car loan will get your money. The gadgets will get your money. But you've yet to put God first in your finances. You've, get, you've yet to return the tithe. There's a time to be obedient. There's a time to be generous with people. Where your treasure is, Jesus says, that's where your heart will be. It's magnetic. It's like that glass of water. <laughs> you know, if that's my treasure, my heart moves towards it. Or maybe... Throughout the years, your boundaries, your dreams have been too small. And now God's saying, look, I've got something bigger for you. Something that's going to touch not just your life and your family's life, but many others. Mary, backwater is going to be used to change the world. You know, I remember a dear friend saying to me, I just do my own small little thing. And that's great. That's faithful. But what if God's calling you to something bigger? The small things often we can do in our own strength, but God wants us to do things in faith. You know, faith pleases God. Things not done in faith is sin. We need to be stretched. Coming and not just kind of make do get by, we need to be stretched. Luke 1, 37, for nothing is impossible with God. Around 2,000 years ago, God was looking for someone whom he could use to change the world. And what he discovered that there was something about that young Mary. And it's no different today. The eyes of the Lord 
search to and fro across the world looking for a heart that's fully devoted towards him you know let's respond to this word today maybe over this christmas time of this christmas time season between christmas and new year when i receive christ maybe today you want to kneel your colors to the mast as a follower of jesus coming to the cross turning away from your sin confessing your sin receiving the holy spirit let's take a moment to pray for you now and then we'll pray for the entire church um that we would learn from mary but maybe you want to say john would you count me in let me pray for you now and echo with this in your heart father pray for those who like me are committing their lives to jesus this christmas time and as they look at their own sinfulness i want to thank you we, that we now look at a great savior jesus we confess our sins everything messed up we thank you that there's forgiveness in the cross we turn from our sin with the help of your Holy Spirit, who now comes upon us, we are going to live a new life. We receive that forgiveness. We receive that gift of eternal life. Thank you for welcoming me into your family today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer or recommitted your life, do drop us a line by email or even comment. Uh, get in touch with us. We've got a free starter pack. We'd love to give you this season. Yeah. And then I want to pray for the church family that there's something about Mary. Maybe a desire to do his will. She had decided to pay the cost and she would take God at his word. Let me pray for us as a church. Yes, Father, I want to thank you that regardless of what's going on in the world, in Mary's day, governments were sending their people all around the place. We know today governments are telling people, don't move poot, but it's equally times of challenge. It was a time of darkness in the time of Mary when Jesus was born. We thank you there's something about her that even in that time of darkness that she could birth a great light. We want to give ourselves to you and say that, yeah, we from this moment on and going into 2021, we desire to do your will. And Lord, we, we, we know you've said there's a cost, there's a cross. Forgive me, forgive us more worried about what others are saying about Christians, what others are saying about the church. Do you hear what they're saying about the church? Do you hear what they're saying about you? Blah, blah, blah. No, Lord, we hear what you're saying. We hear what you say, that your loving thoughts towards us, I number the grains of sand on the seashore, that you have plans for us to prosper, not to harm us. Nancy gives a hope for the future. Yes, we hear what you say, and Lord, we we're going to take you at your word. Even though it may sound crazy, Lord, we're going to be people that take you at your word. Whether it's returning the tithe, that you open the floodgates of heaven. Whether it's when we lay our hands on the sick, they will get well. Whether it's when we preach the gospel, that the gospel is life and will transform lives. Whether it's to forgive people, because rather than holding on to your heart, Lord, we're going to take you at your word. And we want to learn from Mary this year as we her to move into a new year. Yeah, help us be more like her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you. We're going to sing that wonderful carol now. Let's sing that Silent Night. Mickey sings it so well. And I love that little refrain from Ren Collective. Let's come back into Bethlehem, that first night when the king was born.
Yes, Jesus, we thank you on that first silent night. Not too sure how silent it was, but uh, that you were born. And you came for shepherds, you came for all, you came for kings. The upper nights, the downer nights, for all of us. May every household joining for this online congregation this season know your peace reigning in their hearts and in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you've responded to the message today, please, we've got that free pack for you. Why don't you text us or email us, 493-500-infolivinghope.im. Also, if you need, if you'd like a free copy of that 21 Promises and 21, we'll get it posted to you, hopefully get to you by the 10th of January when it starts. Yes, at the printers at the moment. And please, these resources that we're using are a real blessing to others. These lovely carols that we've recorded with a bit of a modern flavor, but still holding on to the tradition. Why don't you, they're on your YouTube channel, they're on Facebook, why don't you share those with others as well? And then we look forward to seeing you online again and say we're all gonna have a little bit of a rest, but our team have put together something special for the 3rd of January. Just a bit of a reflection of the highlights of 2020 and then looking forward into 2020. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you. Give you his shalom. Give you his peace. Amen. <laughs> no, go away. Go away. <laughs> question that there but then when you reply that your people are there thank you Annette for staying away for most of it